So now let's proceed to two-dimensional flow. So the examples we have discussed earlier is only applicable for isotropic soil. So when we say the soil is isotropic, the properties in all directions are equal. So for the case of the soil, the hydraulic conductivity along the x or z direction is equal. On the other hand, when the soil is anisotropic, um, it does not have the same physical properties when the direction of measurement is changed. Is changed. So, for the hydraulic conductivity of the anisotropic soil, K sub X is not equal to K sub C. And, that if, and if that is the case, you have to adopt a scale. So, a scale in the X direction and the scale in the Z direction. And the total flow rate is given by um, the square root of K sub X times K sub Z times the head difference times the number of flow lines all over the number of potential drop or number of drops. So, the next topic is the seepage through earth dumps. So, In this discussion, the earth dam is said to have an, an impervious base, meaning the bottom and the bottom layer, no water can flow through it. And the first step in calculating the seepage through earth dams with an impervious base so, first is to calculate the angle alpha. So, angle alpha is the um, angle of the toe or the inclination with respect to the flat surface or the flat impervious layer. Next is to calculate, calculate delta and 0.3 delta. So, this is is delta and 0 0.3 delta fourth is to cal uh, third is to calculate the distance d so this distance from the toe until the 0 0.3 delta this point and then when the values of alpha and d are already known, we can calculate the length L. So, this inclined length here. And then, with the known value of L, we can now calculate Q or the seepage. So, that is the hydraulic conductivity times tangent and alpha times the length L times sine alpha. So, let's have an example problem. So, given that beta is 45 degrees, alpha is 30 degrees, um, B is 3 meters, H is the H or the depth of the water at the upstream side is 6 meters, the height of the dam is 7.6 meters, and K is equal to 61 times 10 raised to negative 6. Calculate the seepage rate Q in cubic meters per day per meter length. So, for step 1, <coughs> for step 1, alpha is already given. So, that is 30 degrees. For step 2, um, delta and 
0.3 delta. So, we can obtain um, delta by using tangent beta is equal to um, h, which is the opposite, all over the adjacent side, which is delta. And rearranging delta is equal to um, h all over tangent beta or um, 6 meters all over tangent 45 degrees or 6 meters. And for 0 0.3 delta, this is equal to 0 0.3 times 6, that is 1.8 meters. Step 3. So, we have to calculate the distance D. So, the, D, the distance D is equal to the base of the dam. minus 0 0.7 delta so this one okay so if this is the total length or the total length or base of the dam And so, if this is D, so we will get here 0 0.7 delta. So, in order to calculate the base of the dam, we have um, the first one here. So, this is equal to um the height 7.6 all over tangent 30 degrees so 7.6 all over tangent 30 degrees plus the width B, which is equal to 3 meters, plus the rest. So, we have, um, that is equal to 7.6, because tangent 45 degrees is equal to 1. But, for the sake of this calculation, so 7.6 all over tangent 45 degrees minus 0 0.7 uh, delta so 0 0.7 times 1.80 meters so all units are in meters and then calculating we have the distance d as 19.5636 meters. Step 4. We have to calculate L. So L is equal to D all over cosine alpha minus D squared all over cosine squared alpha minus h squared all over sine squared alpha. So, substituting, d is equal to 19.5636 centimeters, uh, I mean meters, and alpha is 30 degrees, and the height h is 7.6. We can calculate l as 3.45 Zero 08 meters and for the last step we have to calculate the flow 
so step 5 q is equal to k for the hydraulic conductivity times tangent alpha times l sine alpha this substituting k as 61 times 10 raised to negative 6 and alpha as 30 degrees and l as 3.4508 meters we can get 6.0766 times 10 raised to negative 5 cubic meter per day per meter width or meter length. So, our last topic is the design of filters. So, when the water sips or flows through a soil, and so this is in the case of an earth dam. So, the fine grains um, is susceptible to being washed away into the coarse material. So, as time passes, this process may clog the void spaces in the coarse material. So, that is the purpose of providing a filter. So, you have to um, satisfy two conditions in designing a filter. So, my first condition is the size of the voids in the filter material should be small enough to hold the larger particles of the protected material in place. And the second condition, the filter material should have a high hydraulic conductivity to prevent the buildup of large seepage forces and hydrostatic pressure in the filters. So, according to Terzaghi and Peck, so Terzaghi is Carl Terzaghi, the father of uh, modern soil mechanics. Um, for the proper selection, you have to um, consider these two conditions. So, for the first condition, so the ratio of D15F to D85S should be less than or equal to 4 to 5. So, when we say D15F, this is the diameter through which 15% of the filter material will pass. And D85S is the diameter through which 15% of soil to be protected will pass. So again, F for the filter and S is the soil or the material in the Earth dam. So for the second condition, D15F, uh, the ratio of D15F to D15S should be greater than or equal to 4 to 5, wherein D85S um, so I mean D85S is the diameter through which 85% of the soil to be protected will pass. So this one is applicable to the first condition and D15F and D15S is already mentioned here. <coughs> so 
you can get these values in the uh, particle size distribution curve in which we have discussed earlier or in the previous chapters. So there is a separate particle size distribution curve for the filter and a separate one for the soil to be protected. So, if you want further read about these topics, you can use the principles of geotechnical engineering by Braham Das or go to um, elementaryengineeringlibrary.com, theconstructor.org, or dreamcivil.com. Also, these are my references to the lecture I have provided. And so, that's it. We have already finished um, permeability and seepage. Um, if you like, you can um, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I will be posting um, new lectures for our subject. And see you in the next video.